because people are scared to be yeah. vulnerable, intimate, um, and I think especially dudes. Got to be cool. You got to be strong. Keep it together. You got to keep it together, which I think I can do all of those things. Well, also, <laughs> crying. crying. <laughs> Ask a whole bunch of questions that hopefully we can like drill down into a little bit more about like who we are and why we're friends, and why we get it. along. This is um, I can't read the label. Henry this is McKenna. Henry here. McKenna. It's actually bottled in bond. You know what that means? I have no idea what that means. Bottled in bond. I feel like you're about to tell a complete lie though. Right. Now. This is a hundred percent real. <laughs> uh, bottled in bond means that this is still one of the only whiskeys in the United States bottled under the supervision of the U.S. government. Is and this that what is, the Martha's guys just told you? Absolutely. This is literally <laughs> the end of my knowledge right here. I'm now done. <laughs> Gentlemen, cheers. Cheers. Well, it's a good conversation. Cheers. Good conversation. Huh. Do you guys want to start off with a banger, or do you just want to start off with a fun one? Like now, bangers know. are like, they're like, when's the last time you felt shame? That's a banger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My palms just got so sweaty. Exactly. <laughs> so I'd like so to start with... Start a little uh, easier. Yeah, but fuck okay. a little easier. Um, when's the last time that you felt super excited about something in your life? Mm. I think I know your answer already, yeah. but maybe you could tell the audience about it. Yeah, you it. go first, because yeah, I got to have one right We had the shoot this weekend, and... I don't think it could have gone better. Like everyone involved was giving their all, and it's amazing as a director when you're there and you have this idea in your head of like right. it's gonna look like this, mm -hmm. and then everyone along the way is like, oh, but it could look like this. Oh, we could do this, and it's like something a thousand times more. Three months ago, I just had these images in my mind, and that somehow through like sheer force of will, they're now committed to film, and that is it's like it's a drug. It, yeah, it you feel high mm -hmm. knowing that mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. what you're capable of right? mm -hmm. and and by you're capable of I mean everyone when they come together so right. yeah I mean honestly this morning I woke up and I was like fucking hey so like, how did you like feel when you were looking at those clips like you pulled in like I assume the footage mm -hmm. off to, like the drives and all that it was one of the weirdest feelings and weird's a cheap word it was one of the <laughs> most like I haven't felt that way before Hmm. Like I, it was like a what new experience mean? in that my, because I've seen beautiful things before, yeah. but to know I've played such a integral role into making such pretty things was surreal. Recently, in the past few months, that I want to be a director, and right. so there's always this doubt. There's always like I'm not good enough. I can't do this. To see that footage and be like, well, shit, yes, it looks this good. It. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah so I can. can. Yeah. Every choice, every time there was a fork in the road, I took the choice that would take me closer to directing without actually realizing I was consciously making right. those choices. Mm -hmm. And within the last year, I realized the things I want to be doing yeah. is all involved directing, but I've never had the guts to say, I want to be a director. If I were to hear someone say, I want to be a director, I'd be like, right. of course you do. Cool, go make something. Mm -hmm. Like, go be a director. Right. Like, there's no permission. Like, there's no point where yeah, you cross a buddy. line where all of a sudden, oh, you're a director because of blind. No, right. you're a director because you direct things. I hate highbrow shit, even though, like, I really like art house films. Mm -hmm. I also really, really like lowbrow things that are just done well. Yep. Like, because the story is always king, and I think that is, like, just universal when it comes to this medium. If you don't have a good story and if you're not talking about something that's interesting or like showing something that's interesting or have a perspective that's right. like adds value to the world, uh, filmmaking music. is a sport. Yeah. It's not just for the people that are on top, it's for everybody and we all yeah. can play. I want you to finish up your thoughts about being excited about directing your it's first a, music video. Sorry. First, uh, second it's music video. Cool. This uh, one scared you. Yes. This is the yeah. first time where I'm like, Oh shit, why did I come up with that idea? Right. Like and so now looking forward, it's like the horizon's even broader knowing that like right. well shit, this thing that scared me then we Which pulled that off. painful. Tremendously. Right. Well, I, uh Jerry Seinfeld in Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee, he talks about pain is nothing but knowledge rushing in to fill the gap of the known <laughs> and the unknown. His joke is like, you know, when you stub your toe on the edge of your bed, that is nothing but knowledge running, going like, I'm never going to move my foot in that direction again. But like, you could right. take it to what you're talking about when it comes to, I don't know if I can direct this. 
Yep. But like, it's like, well, you have to like, knowledge has to fill in there somewhere in order yeah. to figure it out. And it's not necessarily pain free. No. It's very like, I kind of have to grow into this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, which I think is a really interesting concept. I had never heard it that way before. Pain is knowledge rushing in to fill a gap. Basically. Yeah. 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 I love that. I think it's a fantastic way. Yeah. Because it's also, it, you could take that in like a million different ways. Yep. Because then we do a lot of, I mean, like, part of why I want to, like, do things like this and, like, have conversations like this with friends and also, like, share them is because I think there's plenty of knowledge that is just not shared because people are scared to be yeah. vulnerable, intimate, um, and I think especially dudes. I think it's generally a, a realm that is, um, everyone's like, you got to be cool. You got to be strong. Keep it together. You got to keep it together. Don't yeah. cry. Oh, yeah. Uh, be the cool guy. All, like, lots of different stuff. Right. Um, which I think I can do all of those things. Wow. <laughs> also. <laughs> crying. Crying. <laughs> <laughs> or not just yeah. crying, but also like just uh, sh sharing my beliefs that I think it is, there's a lot of power in being vulnerable. There's a lot of power in... Um, just telling the truth about who you are, telling the truth about your experiences and how terrified you are about stepping up to the plate and swinging for the fences. Like, yep. those things are not easy. Right. And they're not always pretty. No. And it, like when the, the things aren't like put together, yeah. everyone's like, ah, I'm not gonna talk about it. I don't wanna enter into that mess. No. It's messy, no. fuck that. I'm like, right. why not? <laughs> it's not clean, it's not digestible right away. Right, it's not a yeah. tweet. People don't know how to deal with other people's <laughs> pain well. No, like, that's very true. Dude, people, that I've learned that that people suck at dealing with other people's pain. What do you mean people suck at dealing with other people's pain? I think as a. By the way, the rule is we have to finish this. That's a good sound. You know what? That okay, Dumb and Dumber. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like that early scene. They're in their like shitty apartment, and uh, Jim Carrey. Talking about like a beautiful woman he just met. Yep. He just goes tractor beam, suck like me right in. I spent probably two hours as like a fat kid in my room, kind of whistling, just trying to get it, just trying to lock it in. You were a fat kid too, dude. Huge. How big? Where? Where? We're, at, we're, uh, we're gonna come That's back. Like, to this. Like, <laughs> <a banger. laughs> like, like a banger. Like a banger. Like a banger. He's like a banger. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Reframing. People suck at dealing with other, other people's other pain. People's pain. Other people's pain. Do we want to talk about this in detail of why you know this to be true? I mean, I, that, I'm, I'm fine. I know I'm smiling right now, but it's out of deep fear. <laughs> I learned this uh, with basically two large events in my life. The first one was when I sucked at dealing with somebody else's pain. My brother and sister, they lost their child. When this event happened, I, I think, besides like funerals and things, I hadn't really felt with, dealt with that much pain before. And um, my brother and my sister-in-law were just going through hardship and hardship and hardship. And I was walking into rooms with them and just filled with fear of how to navigate this, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think I had been in the room or in a room with somebody that was in that much pain before. I mean, and after a while, you're like, it's dinner time. What do we do? I remember panicking one time because I didn't know how to broach the topic. Hmm. Are we eating right now? Are we not eating right now? I don't think it was on their brains and what I learned through that season mm -hmm. only by making a million mistakes mm -hmm. was that you just gotta press in. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. ask if you order the pizza, you just order, order the, the pizza. fucking pizza. That woke me up to the fact that maybe you have to be a little more courageous when it comes to pain and especially other people's pain yeah. than you think you needed to, right? So yeah. if someone's hurting, man, just lean in knowing you're gonna mess up. Hmm. Okay. Know that you're. Hey, generally, because that person who's in pain just wants to know that someone actually is paying attention. Yeah. Um, so you said there's two things. There's two things. The second thing is, more more recently within this last year, I got divorced, um, which was, mm -hmm. you know, fucking awful. I mean, there's no way around that. I think I, I honestly, I think I terrified some people. Oh yeah, a lot of yeah. Problems. I think you definitely scared a few people at different moments. Which, I think to I, me, I was sitting there like, you were probably like, "Yay, I'm so excited!" I was like, "Yay!" His feelings are out. Oh, like, his feelings are running around and in injuring things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, injuring. Yeah, that's because that's really because when you don't know how to deal with someone's pain, like or your own pain right. for that matter, like right. they, just, they kind of like have their own legs and they like run into shit. Oh yeah, I think it was you, Caden, who. <laughs> 
Oh, I've said so many terrible things to you. You did, but time. there. Yeah. It's funny. I had one in right we in mind. It. I wasn't sure if to bring it up. Or <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't terrible. It was actually really good. Okay, what was it? We it was a it timing good. thing because I mm. I had called off Uh-oh. I had called off a Uh-oh. wedding. <laughs> Banger! <laughs> right around the same time. That's right. That's and right. so, like, you and I were in the same boat. Like, yeah. I requested things of both of them during the phase that they were in turmoil. Oh, should I say it? Okay, yeah. I should say it. So I was like, hey, Matt, you want to rec- you want to do a wedding video for me and Kate when we get married? Well, you know, when we get married. And, he, and Matt, without hesitation, was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Little did I know that the day that Kate and I were <laughs> We're getting married was the day so that savage. Matt and his ex fiance were supposed to get married. So Matt was doing a wedding video for me on the day that he was supposed to get married to. And like, yes, personal pain was immense. I slept all day the next day of just yeah. like exhausting. Yes. <laughs> Both was, of you, just, I was white. emotionally like, uh, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't even comatose. Man. But all that being said. Your wedding came at the exact right time for me and your vows and everything about that day was this anchor that I needed to keep from drifting too far down that path of like, love is a lie, nothing matters. You know, yes, I was absolutely wasted and ran into my boss that night, which was not a fun experience either. And I do hold you responsible. I mean, for these that. are very good stories though. They're great stories. <laughs> no, they're fantastic stories. <laughs> But there, there was, there was the pain in, in uh-huh. that, uh-huh. in that, in that whole day. And I uh-huh. think, and I, I remember, I remember uh, when I saw you that day, I was just kind of, hey. <laughs> <laughs> then my next questions are a little tricky. And I don't know if I've ever asked either of you this kind of thing before, but I see a counselor very regularly. Mm-hmm. I'm 31 now and I'm trying to figure out how to be like a good dad and a good husband mm-hmm. and, still somehow be good at your job when you don't sleep ever. Mm -hmm. But one of the few things that I've learned recently is that um, when you're feeling like you're not good in certain categories, shame like likes to like, like the pain conversation really likes to just rush in. Shame is the fastest way that I start to not feel like myself. So my question to both of you is like, when's the last time you felt shame in a way that made you feel different than who you are? That's a banger question. It is a banger question. My assumption is that there's going to be a beautiful cut here while we think. I think it was going to be the, um, the you know, in Wheel of Fortune. Not Wheel of Fortune. Jeopardy. Jeopardy. It was at my company Christmas party this year. What? I have not heard this story. We have about... 1200 people holy shit <laughs> so it's not small right like and it's open bar throughout Very the entire exciting. night open like, bar just open bar for 1200 people just just like the t- times this by a billion <laughs> <laughs> somebody like somebody, somebody actually punted a vase this year like just in the, in the lobby of the amway grand just punted it Bing. in the middle of a fight with their significant other so that christmas party happens once every two years right so it's mm-hmm. a big blow thing the the two years previously i was married mm-hmm. and my wife was with me mm. uh at that party and so you you do like and i was somewhat new to the company so you do all the introductions like oh this is my wife hi yeah, hi yeah, you know yeah. oh hi hi you know like you go back and forth it's whatever <laughs> you know you get all the compliments like you guys are such a cute couple oh my oh you know get like all that all this attention and it was totally fine and I think there was a part of me that felt really good about the attention that I got for being paired Uh, and being what I'll say like successfully paired so like I I felt a ton of shame because it was like here I had this stereotypical like successful Christmas party Mm -hmm. two years ago and now I was showing up alone so I wrote my own narrative in my mind on that instance right it was Here's the guy that can't keep a wife. Here's the guy that can't keep his marriage together. Um, all these like really shitty things. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of let that be- become me to an extent. Mm-hmm. I had enough of a, you know, a character that I kind of put on for that night. You know how that can go where you just kind of take on a second skin and you just mm-hmm. kind of say, this is who I am and I'm going to act like this person. And so if you ask anybody that, at, that was at that event, they would just be like, Oh my gosh, I had so much fun with Jordan. If you could have talked to me the minute I got home, you'd have been like, that guy was in so much pain that entire yeah. night. 
because mm. it was me. Because you're di- reliving certain things. Reliving. I mean, yeah. it was in the same place with the same people with the same coworkers. Except you had to do more with the event. But yeah, it, and really. I was I was very involved in the event, which is great. But at the same time, it was just a yeah. deep amount of shame. Yeah. Knowing that look on somebody's face when you tell them that you're not married anymore and Oof. where they give you this slightly Oof. kind of, co- you know, head cock. Oh, thank Aww. you. And it's almost, it's like half pity and question and it's all this type of stuff and and you watch them kind of question, oh, I thought you were a great guy. I wonder what happened. Yeah. So that's my response to shame. We so. both just burped at the same time. Like that you was, finished your story, I was like, that was awful Oof. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have to fucking do this. Okay, too. what was the question? It's your question. When, <laughs> when most recently have you felt deep shame and wanted to cry yourself into oblivion? The reason why I asked that question is because of experience I had yesterday at counseling. I'll uh, preface this I by saying I love my father very much. Fair enough. When I was in high school, I used to get, get up on stage at church and give announcements and mm. do the tithe and offering. And it was the segue between worship and the pastor. I can see you be like, I'm going to interrupt. I can see you being so good at it. I fucking love it. <laughs> like, so good at it. I was, I was like a proper MC. Right. Mm-hmm. And I loved being an MC. And this like, is not like some small church. This is like. No, this is like there's 500 kids that go to this youth group. Like, yeah, this is like. Group. I got a crowd. crowd. Yeah. But it's just like jazz to go. Like, I was like, I can't miss. Like, I already committed. Like, I'm going to be doing the announcements tonight. I got to get there. Right. And I remember my dad saying something along the lines of anybody could do it if you're not there. Someone else could just do it for you. It's not a big deal if you miss it. Hmm. And he was probably just going along the lines of like, you know, it's not the end of the world if you miss one or right. something like that. That was his intent. But what I heard was, what you do up there is not really that special. Mm. Mm. And it, it really fucked me up. <laughs> like, right. so much so that I still remember today I'm 31 years old. Uh, we're, this is the last of it, therefore, this is probably going to be our last conversation topic. You guys ready for my last question? All right, so yeah. as we're going, yeah, thank you guys for, for hanging out with us for however long going. you've actually hung out with us. My question is, when's the last time that you said to yourself, I'm awesome? Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. Ooh, Sunday, that was so specific. Yep. It was It was on the video shoot where watching the playback on it, I was like, we made the right choice. Um, nice. And it's amazing. Like, it is, there's, I've never seen anything like it, and I truly feel like we've, Come. This is the closest I've come to creating something new that hasn't been out there before. And I was like, you know what? Like, if this is what it feels like to be a director, then this is all I want. Uh, I played the drums now for about, I think it's almost, um, maybe sixteen or seventeen years. Ooh. So it's, that's like a huge part of who I am, and it's a part that I kind of let die for a while, and then I picked it back up. One thing after working with my counselor, I also go to counseling. Smart um, move. I also have one. Is saying. All right, you need to dive into that outlet, something that makes you feel like yourself. But I was by myself in my apartment. I had like just hit this look that I was trying for a very, very long time, and I just felt mm. on top of the world. Before that was when Will grabbed my face and he grabbed my cheek like this, and he's like, and, uh, and there's a little video of it somewhere, and he, he's like, just grab my face, and I remember for the first, like he looked at me, and I was like, he knows who I am. Total bullshit, he just came out of the womb. Like, <laughs> Two seconds before, right. but like it, my heart and everything was like, he knows I'm his dad. In that right. moment, I felt awesome too. Well, there are the tears we've been looking for. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, kind of want to. I kind of want to know what Kate's take is after all. Oh yeah, well. I appreciate. She's gonna actually be the. She's gonna like the epilogue. Like we're gonna walk away. It's just gonna sit down. The it's following like, we're, like, things were bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> bing, bing. It's time to finish these drinks. It's a good conversation. It's a, good co- a great conversation. It's a great Cheers. conversation. This is, is this handwritten. Follow me out on Instagram. The only content Don't worth posting online. We drank all of this, so. Once this bottle has been I cannot tell you how much I gotta do right now. <laughs> just walk just in the give, frame. give me a hug. Can you throw one in. of those chips at the camera? Walk in the frame, girl. Could you bring one of those chips to the camera? <laughs> Acting like a prude over here. She's got. They're pretzels. They're not chips. Throw one at the. Don't fall over. You have to get lower. I I gave you half the chair here. Can you hit the lens? This is Kate. 
Kane is the... That was perfect. That was actually fantastic. Came over. Sorry about the lunch. How many have you eaten already? Yes. This is a thumbnail. Hey, we gotta get a thumbnail. We gotta make a thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like two different faces. I forgot how blue pretzels are. So, no, these are gluten free pretzels. Next level.